Well, the center of the college football universe is without a doubt this year, Boulder, Colorado. That is where Deion Sanders is now coaching undefeated the University of Colorado. He was brought in after a one-win season last year and after he turned Jackson State into a household name. He has lit the fire of the most casual football fans with his expressive sideline manner and colorful quotes. His team has also been a big hit on TV due to, in no small part, from black households tuning in to watch the former professional football player turned coach. Colorado's first two games this year rated an average of 74% higher amongst black households and black viewers made up 25% of the audience for Colorado, Colorado State game. Joining us now to talk more about this, National Correspondent Jamal Andrus, Chris Stewart in Colorado, and Tammy Estwick, who has worked in Jackson, Mississippi, where Coach Prime uh, previously coached. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining us here. Jamal, I want to start with you. Uh, Coach Prime, as he's being called, has really taken the country by storm. Why do you think he's been so popular? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Coach Prime is uh, popular by nature. That's his whole thing. I mean, I... For me, at least, uh, you mentioned sort of black households tuning into those those games. Uh, he, it has been amazing to watch him win back favor from those who were sort of disappointed when he left Jackson State, right? Obviously, when he went to Jackson State, that was during a tumultuous time for the country, for college sports. He was sort of deemed as this savior who was going to bring top talent to HBCUs and also money and, and notoriety, and he did that, and then he left. But sort of keeping on theme with all of the things that you mentioned, having the shades and Little Wayne in Boulder, Colorado, and, 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 and sort of having his mom give pregame speeches. It has been just amazing to watch him take that exact same energy he had there at Jackson State, bring it to Boulder, Colorado, and win games. I mean, beating Nebraska and TCU is no small feat. Obviously, he had that game against Colorado State, in-state rival that they were supposed to beat like a drum and had to fight some double overtime to get a W out of them. So, Again, I, I, am, I have been uh, just taken by all of this, and I'm tuning in. I don't know about everybody else, but I am absolutely <laughs> watching every Colorado game this year. Yeah. Jamal, you mentioned those shades, and they are already sold out on pre-order, by the way. Oh, yeah. he's, he's partnered with a, a company to sell those. I want to go to you, Tammy. How have the town and Jackson State University been affected by all of this? Well, as someone that has lived and worked in Jackson for over a decade, I can tell you, Deion Sanders is his own PR machine. The man is a powerhouse. He's everything that people believe he is. But I've got to speak for the Jackson State fans out there that are still very, very upset at the way he left. Winning that championship game and, from what I'm told, hopping on a jet to head to Colorado with their team jacket on and the paint hasn't even dried. A lot of Jackson State fans are still upset to this day over the way Prime left. Prime did promise a lot of things to Jackson State that he was there to bring in more fans, to bring in more followers, to bring in more money to the school. And some of that he did accomplish. He also put a huge highlight on HBCUs as a whole. I'm a graduate of Southern University, one of Jackson State's rivals, and just watching him there vouch for not only Jackson State, but HBCUs was amazing. But many people saying it's the way he left. He just pulled up anchor and took off. And some of the things that he did before he, the months before he left, he seemed like he wasn't exactly into the Jackson culture at one point. A lot of people still upset, like I said. Mm, yeah, kind of left a bad taste in the mouth there. Uh, Chris, you're in Colorado. What do you think the hype is like there? What What's it been like? Uh, it's been incredible. I mean, Tammy does bring up a good point, and, and I think that's important to bring up just as everybody gets caught up in everything about Coach Prime. I mean, I live in the middle of it. I was listening to Denver Sports Talk Radio on the way in today, and they led with talking about Colorado football. And then they talked about the Denver Broncos. That's unheard of in this town. I mean, as it, I can just speak from where CU football was before Coach Prime. I mean, if you're a CU fan, like, you've won the lottery because this team was awful for roughly 20 years. I mean, just to be honest. And it's not just, like, bad. I mean, nobody cared. And then now to see the numbers that they're doing. I mean, that Colorado State game last week, which typically is, is a thing alums talk about in state here in Colorado, that game started at 10 p.m. on the East Coast. 
and you had people watching through two overtimes until 2.30 in the morning. Uh, I mean, it's 8 o'clock here was kickoff, and I barely made it through uh, just past midnight. So it's, it's something that has been, you know, incredible, and to see it happen, especially living here, and you see what Colorado football was before Deion Sanders, and then now for him to come in, and they're undefeated, uh, and that's something that, uh, even if they don't end up winning this weekend, they have a huge game against Oregon. Uh, no one was predicting that they would be 3-0 and at this point. Well, Chris, what about that game uh, tomorrow, the toughest task yet? Do they have enough momentum to win? Uh, it's a good question. Everybody has said, you know, coming in, nobody thought they were going to beat TCU. I personally think that Oregon's just a little bit of a different animal compared to the level of competition they've played. Uh, I'll be root I'm a believer in Deion Sanders and what he's building at Colorado. I think it could be a tough game tomorrow. They're down. Uh, Travis Hunter, who uh, is their best skill player, Shador Sanders, Deion Sons, the quarterback, and he could potentially win the Heisman Trophy. But uh, without Travis Hunter, it could be difficult against a team like Oregon. But there are a lot of winnable games uh, down the stretch uh, for Colorado uh, this season. A lot of eyeballs yeah, yeah, will be know, watching. Jamal, you know, we had a guest on earlier to talk about how Coach Prime represents Black America. What does his presence actually do? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I think one of the things that um, has carried him throughout this his, his tenure as a coach and even before when he was a player is that confidence, walking mm -hmm. around with a certain amount of confidence and not sort of putting your head down. Uh, when the spotlight is as big as it can be. And then to take that same confidence when you were actually on the field and then sort of instill it in your kids and be on the sidelines and watch them that carry sense. that forward, I think is extremely important. And specifically on the HBCU point, you know, a lot of people were going to say, no matter what, can Coach Prime do this on the next level? And so I know that there's, again, left, left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths down there in Jackson. But I think for a lot of folks who are watching and wanted some notoriety for those HBCU athletic programs in particular, it's been really nice to watch this person uh, and this team sort of make their way to a Power Five conference and do it just as well there. And I want to just really quickly, Shadur Sanders is for real. Like, I, 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 uh, if the 98-yard drive didn't do it for you, he leads the nation <laughs> in overtime passing yards, second half passing yards, and passing yards on third down. He's not playing with y'all. <laughs> he needs no, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, just one, one thing kind of piggybacking off what Jamal said. I mean, when you watch this team, I watch a lot of college football, to be honest. But, like, when you watch this team, like, they believe in a way that not every team does in their coach. And that's why they have a shot in every single game. And you talk about Deion Sanders and who he is. He last played football in the NFL in 2005. He won a Super Bowl in 1999. Some of his players weren't even born when he won a Super Bowl. And today, he can still walk into any living room in America of a high school football recruit, and he still is as relevant today as he was back then, which uh, few athletes have been able to do. You think of Michael Jordan and a couple others, yeah. but uh, Deion Sanders is certainly up there. Yeah, it's got the magic And we talk about black touch, versus he? white. Yeah. I think that even he transcends that. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're doing a lot of talking about yeah. how black college sports were affected, but there's many, many people from many different backgrounds that are watching, and they're watching because of Dion, because he in himself is a whole personality, a whole personality. He definitely has that special something. Jamal, Tammy, and Chris, great discussion ahead of their biggest game so far, so we'll see what happens. Thanks, guys.